I used to have cheat meals all the time. I would put myself in a caloric deficit for a long period of time, and then I would go one or two days, eat a caloric surplus, and I was still losing fat, but I would fluctuate a lot. I was inconsistent, water retention would be all over the place, and ultimately I found that it was really hard for me to get to the body fat percentage that I wanted to be at, especially to stay under 10%. Because I thought for the longest time that if I would just like put myself in a caloric deficit, then have a large cheat meal, I could get the things that I want. I could enjoy the food that I want and I would still be able to maintain because I'd for the most part be in a deficit. What I didn't realize is that I was doing it wrong. And I feel like I'm doing it better now where I, I have little bits of food that I like every single day, but you've got to hear this research because this, this will change your perspective and will give you insight as to how to do it better. But before we dive into that, I put a link down below for 50% off of Create Creatine Gummies. These are sweetened with allulose, so they don't have added sugar or anything like that. 1.5 grams of creatine per gummy. So it allows you to dose it appropriately throughout the course of the day, not just in one big bolus, which is great because that seems to help some of the water retention that may come along with creatine supplementation. I've noticed that if I take like one and a half grams in the morning and the lunch and in the evening, my water retention doesn't go up like I do if I take five or 10 grams in the morning. Plus, they taste really good. They have four delicious flavors. They have a sour apple, they have a watermelon, a blue raspberry, and an orange, and it's 50% off. So a great way to get creatine in when all the literature is starting to really come pouring out how awesome creatine is. So that link is down below. When it comes down to it, a cheat meal has a more calorific effect. What this means is because of adaptive thermogenesis, as our calories decrease, our resting energy expenditure, our resting metabolic rate, our base metabolic rate decreases, and it can happen pretty fast. And I'll explain this with a study that was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. This study had people do one week of overfeeding at a 50% surplus, and then it had them do three weeks in a caloric deficit, and then went back to two weeks of refeeding in a surplus. Ultimately, what they found is that the subjects that ended up going through the deficit, when they went through a caloric deficit, ended up decreasing their resting energy expenditure, their amount of calories they burn in a day by 108 calories. 32 of these calories had to do with the loss of muscle mass, but 76 of these calories were due to true adaptive thermogenesis. What this means is true adaptive thermogenesis. It wasn't a loss of muscle, it was the fact that the body turned down how much they burn in an effort to maintain. So we lost muscle, sure, that reduced the amount of calories burned, but they also, the whole system up top turned everything down. And we've heard of this before. It's the quote unquote slowing of the metabolism when you diet. What's interesting is there was a study published in Nutrition Hospitalaria, and this took a look at overweight people in a deficit. So they put them in a deficit for three months and they compared them to people that lost 5% or didn't lose 5%. They compared them to one another. Obese people ended up having about a loss of 164 calories. It may be more intense with people that are overweight or obese. So the impact of adaptive thermogenesis might even be more aggressive or your body's trying to preserve even more. Let's say 2,500 calories is your maintenance and you put yourself into a 500 calorie deficit. So you're eating 2,000 calories a day. At the end of the week, you are in a 3,000 calorie deficit. Congratulations, you lost almost a pound if this is true. Now, considering the metabolic slowdown that occurred, you would think, okay, I can consume 3,000 calories and then I'd be at break even, right? Well, that's wrong because your basal metabolic rate has decreased. So if you were to consume 3,000 calories, you'd actually gain weight. You get what I'm saying? Because you've brought your basal metabolic rate down and then you're still consuming a cheat meal. So you need to adjust your cheat meals, which actually gets really, really difficult. I don't like to suffer for a week just to have one piece of enjoyment. That's like living week to week. It's almost like living paycheck to paycheck psychologically. I don't like that. So let's take a look at the physiological side though, because there's a leptin discussion. Leptin is a hormone that is secreted by fat. And when we eat higher amounts, larger amounts of food that stimulates us to be our metabolism, right? but it may not be the case. So let's take a look at this. There was a study that was published in the journal Obesity and Related Metabolic Disorders. 
What this study had them do is it had them consume three days of an isoenergetic diet. So two groups ate the same amount of calories, same fuel. And then they had them consume either a high fat diet for a few days or a high carbohydrate diet for a few days. What they did find is that the group that overfed carbohydrates had a 28% increase in leptin. The group that overfed fat did not have an increase in leptin. Now, leptin, in theory, should secrete and it should stimulate the metabolism because it's leptin's job to be secreted from the fat to tell the brain, hey brain, we have enough fuel on hand, feel free to ramp up that metabolism. Go right for it, boom. Okay, so that's great. Eating extra carbs after being in a deficit will stimulate leptin, 28%. Sounds like good news, but there's more to it. No relationship between changes in leptin concentration and changes in energy expenditure, suggesting leptin is not involved in the stimulation of energy metabolism during overfeeding. What that means is, yes, there is an increase in leptin, but there was no relationship with leptin and overall energy expenditure. Leptin did not stoke the metabolism. So just because leptin increased, it doesn't mean that it drove up the metabolism. It may have been a very temporary increase. So eating cheat meals to stimulate leptin, not gonna fly. It's not the real way. On the contrary, there was a study published in obesity that found that having cheat meals might actually be detrimental, even when it comes down to leptin. What this study did is it had subjects consume a either high calorie or low calorie diet for a little while. And then for two days, it had them consume either a high carb or a high fat or a combination, basically had them over consume, put themselves in a surplus for a couple of days. What they found is that two days of eating in a surplus of cheat days ultimately ended up making them eat more for four days following that. It increased the carb cravings, it increased the hunger, and it overall increased their actual food intake by changing the brain. It may have to do with leptin, it may be something completely different, but bottom line is the cheat meals, the cheat days after being in a deficit actually made them eat more. So it was seriously problematic. It actually has a longer term detriment. I always thought cheat meals were good, but then when I look back at my personal experience, I do a lot better by just having little bits of cheat meals every day and keeping my metabolism elevated. Now I know that's easy to say, but the biggest thing that I've learned is G-flux. Okay, G-flux for me means I would rather eat a little bit more and move a little bit more than eat less and move less. So now I've learned, okay, Thomas, enjoy a little bit of the food that you like, but go move a little bit more. Eat that food, don't put yourself into such a deficit where it's miserable. Induce a deficit by eating a little bit more and then moving a little bit more to counterbalance it. Because that way you're not decreasing your metabolic rate as much. This is so important. So now I don't have massive cheat meals. I don't do that anymore. That, I, I agree, that messed me up. It was hard to maintain my weight. Now I might have three or four little cheats throughout the week and I just balance it out and I don't crave a massive cheat meal. Okay, now I wanna continue on talking about this whole leptin thing because most overweight people are leptin resistant. So what good does it do you to have a cheat meal that stimulates leptin when you're leptin resistant in the first place? It's increasing circulating leptin, but the leptin isn't docking anywhere. It actually makes you more leptin resistant. Think of leptin, let's just call it an ex-girlfriend or something, keeps calling you, okay? If they call you and call you and call you and call you constantly, and you don't wanna to talk to them, you're gonna build resistance and you're gonna eventually block them so they can't even contact you. That's like leptin receptors and leptin. That is leptin resistance. Leptin's like, hey, I'm here, I'm here. Hey, increase metabolism, increase metabolism. Finally, the brain's just like, shut up, wall up, friend zoned, done, right? If there was a break from food for a long period of time, i.e. maybe some fasting, things like that, it can restore leptin sensitivity. Maybe after a year apart, from your ex-girlfriend, she calls you and you're like, yeah, it's been a while, I'm kind of in the mood, might be kind of nice, all right. And then it rekindles this beautiful relationship and you run off into the sunset, whatever. Point is, the last thing that that ex-girlfriend should have done would be call you more during that time. So by increasing leptin, by eating bigger cheat meals, all you're doing is making more pesky phone calls. You're actually making the problem worse you're better off to exercise and just increase your calories a little bit here and there. Maybe try a slower deficit or go into a heavy deficit, lose the fat, 
but keep in mind that you do need to occasionally spike it. Here's a solution that I have found works. High calorie day, low calorie day. High calorie day, low calorie day. Or fasting day, non-fasting day. Fasting day, non-fasting day. These little things like that, along with big amounts of movement, will defeat this entire problem. You don't need to have these massive, massive cheat meals. Trust me, as someone that has made those mistakes, you are better off to enjoy the chocolate. Have the fun. Not to mention, metabolically, there was a study published in scientific reports that found that like, after being in a deficit and reducing calories, this is done in mice, but basically once the fuel comes back in, in a surplus, it can actually be metabolically damaging. You can have issues with your vessels, your blood vessels, you can have issues with blood sugar because you're restricting so much and then you bring it back. That is problematic. So don't make the mistakes that I've made. Don't focus on one cheat meal. That's putting the wrong goal in place. Deficit, deficit, deficit. Restrict, restrict, restrict. Go overboard. Restrict, 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 restrict. Go overboard. Nah, better to little restriction, little life. Little restriction, little life. I'll see you tomorrow.